स्केल्स ऑफ मेजरमेंट सो एनी वेरिएबल दैट इज मेजरेबल कैन बी कैटेगराइज इन टू फोर स्केल्स सो वट आर दो फोर स्केल्स नंबर वन नॉमिनल स्केल नंबर टू ऑर्डिनल स्केल नंबर थ्री इंटरवल स्केल नंबर फोर रेशो स्केल सो एनी वेरिएबल एनी वेरिएबल दैट इज मेजरेबल कैन बी कैटेगराइज इन टू दीज फोर टाइप ऑफ स्केल्स so a variable that is measurable any variable let's say age let's say gender let's say culture let's say job satisfaction let's say community engagement now how do you decide that okay my variable let's say age is in nominal ordinal interval or ratio scale in order to do this a particular variable will have to satisfy certain properties so each of these scales have certain properties that they must satisfy so a variable must satisfy certain set of properties in order to be categorized in one of these scales so each of these scales have got certain properties so what are those properties let's look at them insert table nominal ordinal interval ratio so let's correct the format so nominal and these scales are like stairs you cannot reach or a variable cannot be categorized in ratio scale unless or until it satisfies the properties of all the the other three scales so a variable cannot be on interval scale if it doesn't satisfy the properties of these two scales a variable cannot be on ordinal scale if it doesn't satisfy the properties of nominal scale ratio scale a variable on ratio scale or ratio scale will have all the properties of these scales plus its own property as well so what is the property of variable in nominal scale the property is identity only one single property that's it nothing else identity so a variable in nominal scale will have to have identity the second is ordinal so a variable in ordinal will have identity and weight so you see ordinal have got identity property as in nominal scale plus one of its own property as well interval scale it will have identity weight and equal interval this interval scale has got two properties of identity and weight from ordinal scale and it has got one of its own property as well now ratio scale now ratio scale 1 it has to have identity two it has to have weight three it has to have equal interval and four it has to have true zero so apart from having these other properties of the preceding scales ratio has got one property of its own okay now what is identity what is weight what is equal interval and what is true zero 
Now, why do we use scales of measurement? Scales of measurement is used to identify the numerical strength of the variables. So we use scales of measurement to identify the numerical strength of variables. The higher a variable on in the scale, the higher is its numerical strength. So a variable on a ratio scale will have higher numerical strength in comparison to the other scales. So what do we mean by numerical strength? By numerical strength we mean that numerical operations like addition, subtraction, division, multiplication can be performed on the variable. A variable on ratio scale can be utilized to perform all these operations. While a variable on nominal scale or ordinal scale or internal scale may not be able to utilize all these mathematical operations. So, what does this mean? This means that later when you are doing your analysis, you will have to see which scale does the variable fall in. And your analysis will be based on these scales. So, a variable on nominal scale or ordinal scale cannot be used for maybe multiple regression or independent sample t-test to compare differences but that comes later. Now how do we categorize a variable? Now the first thing is that what you are doing is you are categorizing a variable. What makes a variable variable? Its values. Varying values means that a particular concept can be variable. Let's say gender. So the first step is step one. Whenever you are trying to categorize a variable, once you write the variable, identify its values. What values it can hold? In this case, let's say we write male and we write female. So it can hold two values. One is male, the other is female. Now the next step is, the first step, identify the, the values it can hold. The next step is that since you are interested in identifying the numerical strength of variables, you give representation to the values a variable can hold. What do I mean by representation? You represent these values by numbers. You identify these values by numbers. What do I mean by identification? That you represent these values by numbers. Let's say male is 1, female is 2. So what is this 1? What is this 2? This is or these numbers are providing identity to these values. These numbers are providing identity to these values. Values for what? The variable gender. So now we can say that this variable gender has got this one. This provides identity to male. This two provides identity to female. What is this? This is identity. Identity for these values. Values belonging to this variable. So can we say that this variable here, gender, does it satisfy the identity property? Yes, it satisfies the identity property. Once a variable satisfies one property, you have to check it for the next property, that is weight. So what do you mean by weight? Weight means order. Order in what? Order in the values. Can gender be or can the values in gender have order? Let's say if I write like this gender female male. Now does it make a difference like this if, you, if I write like this or if I write like this does it make a difference? No it doesn't make any difference. So 
the values in the variable gender, gender does not have any order so the variable gender fails to satisfy the property of weight so this variable obviously once it's once is once it doesn't satisfy the weight property you do not need to go ahead so what is this gender is nominal let me let me take another variable position there could be first position there could be second position and then there is third position so why am I writing one? This is for identity. First, second, and third. Now, these are the values for the variable. Variable position. Oh, sorry. Mistake. Third. These values, these numbers are identifying these values. Okay. Identity property. Done. Let's say if there is weight or order. Yes, there is weight or order. First, second, third. If you destruct this order, for example, let, let's say we write it like this. Second, first, third. The inherent order, the natural order is now disturbed. So, there is an inherent order in the values of this variable. When there is an inherent order in the variable or the values of the variable, this property is satisfied. So, once this is satisfied, let's see if we can say that, okay, this is now on ordinal scale. But since both, are the, both of the properties are satisfied, let's now check it for equal interval. So, what do you mean by equal interval? The distance between first and second and the distance between second and third should be equal. How do we check this? Let's say the person who got first position had 85 marks. The person who got second position had 75 marks. The person who got third position had 64 marks. So what's the distance between this and this? The difference is between first and second, the difference is 10 marks. First and second, the difference is 10 marks. So, what's the difference between second and third? It's 11 marks. So, we can say that the magnitude of distance between the two categories or variables or the values in the variable sorry is not equal in this case so this cannot be termed as interval scale so in this case we cannot say that this is on equal interval so your position variable is on ordinal scale let's take another example let's say we take education or let's say age so a person could be 34 years of age 35 36 37 38 or 39 or 40 50 whatever now the interesting part is that this particular age variable can hold so many values, maybe 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. So when a variable can hold so many values, the first thing that we need to do is we need to divide it into classes or groups. So what are the groups? Let's say 21 to 30, 31 to 40, 41 to 50, 51 to 60. So, if a variable can hold as many values like 40, 50, 60, maybe 20, maybe 15, it's always a good idea to divide it into groups like this or categories or range. 
so now the first step is or what you need to do is give these categories identity so let's say we represent this by 1 this by 2 this by 3 this by 4 now identity property done so age obviously it can be on nominal now let's see if these or if this age variable has got weight so let's see the values 21 to 30 is obviously less than 31 to 40 there is an inherent order 41 to 50 is less than 51 to 60 so there is an inherent order so this property or order property done let's see if we've got equal interval 21 to 30 what's the difference 10 31 to 40 what's the difference 10 41 to 50 what's the difference 10 51 to 60 what's the difference 10 so the equal interval property is now satisfied but once these three properties are satisfied now we need to check it for this fourth property to see whether it actually is in the ratio scale once these properties are satisfied obviously we check for the next property can age have a value zero can somebody say my age is zero no age can never be zero so in this case age cannot be on ratio scale so age is an example of what we call the interval scale now let's say we have got another variable return on investment let's say you've invested 10 rupees and you are lucky enough let's say you you can you may get 10 rupees back you may get 20 you may get 21 you may get 100 you may get 1000 you may get 10000 so there could be multiple values hundreds of values that might be might might come so what you need to do is you can categorize those values so in interval and ratio scale in major, most of the times you will have variables that can be categorized like this they can be presented in a sort of a range so let's say your return could be for now i'm just going to make a slight tweak later for now let's assume it could be 1 or 10 1 to 10 it could be 11 to 20 it could be 21 to 30 it could be 31 to 40 so on and so forth can we give them an identity yes 1 2 3 4 so what are these numbers 1 2 3 4 they are representing these categories these ranges is there a is there an order yes 1 to 10 is less than 11 to 20 11 to 20 is less than 21 to 30 31 to 40 is obviously greater than this so there is an inherent order is this equal magnitude or equal interval yes the difference between 1 to 10 is 10 11 to 20 is 10 21 to 30 is 10 31 to 40 is 10 now can it have zero yes return on investment can have zero why not I gave someone an investment maybe 10 rupees 20 rupees and he ran away or he suffered a loss so my investment is gone so return on investment can have a zero so this will be a true zero what do I mean by true zero let's say it's zero degree centigrade outside so will it be cold or hot obviously extremely cold so if it's extremely cold there is an effect of the temperature so you cannot say it's a true zero it's an arbitrary zero in this case this zero is true zero because your investment is gone so this is how you categorize variables into different scales of measurement